Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. This week's Pick a Card features something a little bit different. I've got the quote jar as usual, but inside we've got quite a lot, as you can see, of bits of paper. And on these bits of paper are song lyrics. So I've just grabbed different parts of different songs that I think are really cool. And I did that over a couple of mornings this week, you know, grab a cup of tea, put on some of my favorite music and just write out the different lyrics. So it's been a lot of fun for me to do. I've kind of forgotten who's in there, but there's all kinds of music from all kinds of different artists. Like I think we've got some Nick Drake in there. I think we've got Basement Jacks, we've got Green Day, we've got James Taylor, you know, all kinds of different uh, musicians. So songs are brilliant because songs aren't just about love. Songs are about life. Songs are about what it is to be here. There are some very motivating and uplifting songs. So I've definitely picked songs that are about life, that are uplifting, that are motivating. Uh, or, or that, you know, they're not necessarily about love one of these days. So what we'll do is we'll, um, we're going to draw these and then I'm going to keep them. And then the next pick a card we do, we'll just use them up. We'll use them up till they go. And then I think the next set I want to do might be poetry. So that could be really nice. Uh, when I get to the poetry side of things, I've got lots of poets that I absolutely love. So that's a bit of background about what's in this jar, but if you would like, and you've probably done this already, you're very welcome to just jump into group one, group two, or group three, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group one. If you chose group one, you're in the right place. Let's take a look at your cards. I'm gonna show you them one by one so that you can see what comes into your intuition. Take a look at the cards, look at the symbolism, see what it's saying to you. Okay, this is a great way to train up your intuition as you watch these pick a card readings. You can see what these cards are saying to you. So we've got a beautiful polar bear, little baby polar bear too. <laughs> this one came up, I think it was, was it in group three? This was like a week ago, two weeks ago. We had this before, so it's quite interesting. We're kind of getting some of the same cards come through. For tarot, you have got, and we've got a new deck here, which I got, I think, a week or two ago. Uh, this whole reading features two new decks. This is one of them. So this is the Page of Cups. How cute. This is the Happy Tarot. I love this tarot deck. It really does, uh, it does make you happy, I tell you. You can't, you can't look at this. Even You look at, like, the Three of Swords or something, and it's still happy. So, okay, we've got... The Wheel of Fortune in reverse. It's not focusing. There we go. Okay, and the other tarot card. Oh, there we go. You do have the Three of Swords. Well, my, my, I was just talking about that, and here it is. Three of Swords, and you got it upright. Okay, so this is a bit of a tough card. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But we all experience this in life, and it's natural, and we all go through you know, times of heartbreak. It's part of life, a natural part of life. The void. We've had this card before. Uh, I think we might have even had it two or three times out of all the different, gosh, that's not even appearing on the screen. There we go. And now we've got the Pisces symbol here and it says, and I'm just going to read out what it says, it says Algarve. It says hostility and enmity. Now it says, do not allow your ego to blind your soul. Offer benevolence to those who despise you. Wow, that's a bit full on. <laughs> We're going to take a look. We're going to take a look at all this. We're going to see what all this means. Okay. So group one, what have you been going through. Let's take a look at these cards. I think you've come to a time in your life where you're ready to do some more clearing. This is another layer or level of clearing of your heart. 
This is a card of heartbreak. This is a challenging card, no doubt about it. Heartbreak is, and it, it doesn't necessarily just have to do with love life, interestingly. Heartbreak can be, even in relation to a dream that you are no longer able to pursue. Heartbreak can be of all kinds and it is a natural part of life. The other thing is that we go through heartbreak, I do believe, in childhood, you know, either by a scolding from a parent or something that doesn't work out because when we're little our hearts are just growing and they're small and you know it's like they can kind of break a little bit easily when we're very small. So So there is some shedding or clearing that your heart may need to do. Now, do you need to be consciously aware of what it is? And I've done a lot of reading about this. And I would say, no, you don't have to. And the best guy to go to, and you know I keep referring to him, Dr. David Hawkins, the book Letting Go, and all of his books, Healing and Recovery, Power Versus Force, he's written so much. He actually says quite clearly, and he's a trained psychotherapist, uh, you know, he's, a, he's got a doctorate and all that kind of thing, and he basically says you don't need to know what it is that you need to let go of, but you do need to just be willing. If you're willing that your heart be cleaned and cleared, and you speak to the, to the divine and you say, look, help me out here, you know, and you've got this period of the void here, you're going to need just some time out, okay, uh, for this clearing to happen. And what you need, you just need two things. You need a bit of time out and you need the willingness, the willingness to, to clear and heal and let go. That's it. Because the divine is going to do the rest, okay? The divine steps in through this card and says, I want to help you. I want to give you a leg up. I want to make this easier for you. It's not just on your shoulders alone. You've got me. That's what the divine is saying through this card. The divine is the big polar bear and you are the little polar bear here, right? So uh, that's very much a, a way of seeing this card. And yeah, I think the first time I drew it was whenever it was a week ago, two weeks ago for the other group but uh, it's come for you now and this is the divine stepping in and saying you're not alone yes you do need you know you'll it'll seem like you're alone when you're in this void space this is no man's land this is lonely this is not fun but this is going to be so good for you this is going to be a, a wonderful time of renewal this card is pisces so it's also matching here with this uh, this symbol here is Pisces and it's saying, I mean, do not allow your ego to blind your soul, offer benevolence to those who despise you. And I mean, look, nobody despises you, okay, that's really strong language there. But, you know, everybody, we all have um, things to go through. And this, this was reminding me actually of a situation at work where there was this boss of mine who absolutely couldn't stand me. And I remember I was doing a lot of Louise Hay work at the time. And I remembered doing this, which was silently and quietly in the privacy of my mind. When I would walk up the stairs of that workplace, and I used to have to walk past his desk every day. And I just used to quietly send him love. And yeah, it, you know, it was a good thing that I did that. I ended up leaving that workplace. Me and quite a few other people left eventually, but um, but I did that technique of um, offering this guy love quietly in my mind. And it worked. It worked to treat. Things rearranged, life rearranged itself, and I eventually didn't have to work with that person. I ended up landing a better job somewhere else. Things ended up going better. But it was because from me, what I kept doing was I kept offering love. And it's difficult to do, like no one's asking you to do this insincerely. If you are in a situation where, as it's talking about here, where there is, say, for example, some 
hostility and enmity and you know, all this kind of thing what it's talking about here uh, if you are in a tough spot and you genuinely don't feel like even silently or quietly offering love to that person don't 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 be don't ever be fake always be honest you have to be honest and it just means you need more time out it just needs you need more bubble time more time away uh, David Hawkins also says this he says that you know if you can't resolve the thing or it's perfectly fine to avoid it for a time okay so there might be a situation that could do with you just stepping away from the situation you don't need to um, you don't you don't need to to put the foot on the accelerator right now you, you can you can take your foot off and that's very much coming in through this card in reverse okay wheel of fortune in reverse one of the ways of reading this is to say that you see because when the wheel is upright you know that it's going to turn and it's going to move and either something very good or, or not so good is going to happen you know but the wheel of destiny is moving for you right now it's kind of stopped <laughs> okay that's one of the way I'm, ways I'm reading this is to say that the, the wheel of destiny for a time right now it's just on a bit of pause it's 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 paused it's paused for you to get in touch with I would say your higher self uh, to carve out that bit of me time to be alone you know for a little while and when you are ready to come out of this phase and this matches so beautifully with the Pisces card here but when you're ready to come out of this phase when you feel like I've had my downtime I'm okay I can I can keep going the way to kickstart that and to get out of the place where you are is just to offer love to somebody to anybody okay this was another thing I was thinking about that this is also calling you to do when you're ready to come out as I say of the, this phase of quiet time to get out of that offer your cup of love to someone to anyone you could be at the supermarket and at the checkout perhaps the person who's you know dealing with your groceries maybe they got a really cool haircut or something I don't know and you can just give them a compliment just make someone's day just give them a great big compliment just give them some love just give some random person some love the other way of coming out of and this is a classic thing for coming out of depression in order to come out of depression I'm not saying you're depressed this is not saying that but if you're in a void time or if you're in a space where you're on your own or you need a bit of quiet time downtime to come out of that help someone who's less fortunate than you that's another thing that they say so this is about giving love and that'll be a terrific way for you to kickstart things again but it from this spread I am definitely getting the sense that you need a bit of time out and and just be willing just ask the divine to help clear this situation or heal this situation you do the downtime the divine's going to do the rest okay we're going to take a look and see what song lyric comes for you i'm so excited to choose from a song lyric i'm just looking behind me out my window it's like about a million cars out there i don't know why what's going on what's going on sydney <laughs> it's raining that's why i'm indoors today otherwise i would have loved to have gone out let's see what song lyrics we have i'm so excited oh wow it's tears for fears everybody wants to rule the world i can't stand this indecision married with a lack of vision everybody wants to rule the world how interesting <coughs> just going to take a look at this a bit more mm. you are definitely going through something you see everybody wants to rule the world everybody wants control that's this card look at what it's saying here it's saying do not allow your ego to blind your soul offer benevolence to those who despise you and you know what I'm gonna uh, that word despise you doesn't fit here it's kind of like offer benevolence to those who want to control you that's more like it so I think there's some control here I think there's some kind of relationship and I mean look this could be romantic it doesn't have to be I mean we do have this card here this is a heartbreak card this can be to do with romance but 
it doesn't have to be, it could be a controlling boss or something like that. But it does kind of feel like, yeah, this everybody wants to rule the world. This, I think, is, I mean, that's a line about all about control. And I can't stand this indecision married with a lack of vision. So it's like, there, it feels like this, if there is a person, maybe they're wanting to control you, but they, that's the end game for them. There's, there's no vision, there's no, you know, they just want you controlled. Um, yeah, far out. That's not a great situation. Well, look, I tell you what, you're going to rise above this. There's no way this is going to hold you back. Uh, no way, because you're on the spiritual path. And this person who's trying to do any of that probably isn't. Not in the same profound way that you are, okay? So if you are in a tight spot, difficult situation with a particular person, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to transform. It really is. And you just might need to avoid them. Uh, be in touch with the divine. The divine does want to help you. And eventually you'll be able to offer your love to the world again in a way that's safe and will be received and respected and, and, and cherished by, by uh, that other person. So guys, I hope this has been a good reading for you. Let me know in the comments below how you got on and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there group two. If you chose group number two, you are in the right place. Let's take a look at the cards that you have pulled through. I like to show the cards one by one so that you can see, you can use your intuition and see what comes into your mind. So we've got the breathe card. How lovely. Love that. So pretty. Then for tarot we have got the Emperor in reverse. This is a new deck that I have. So in this reading you will see two new decks. There was a new deck in group number one as well. I'm so lucky. I have a very generous client who um, basically yeah, provided money and I'm able to buy these. So I'm very lucky about that. Uh, <clears throat> we've got Seven of Cups in reverse. And you've also, oh, you've got another reversed card, but this is a good one. <laughs> this is a good one to have reversed. This is a Seven of Swords in reverse. Look at that. Okay. Oh, I love this. New beginnings. New moon beginnings. How beautiful. I love this card. That's a great card to choose. Okay, and we've got that says a karfa. Separation and conflict. Turn your problems into opportunities. Treat hostility with kindness. And the symbols here, we've got Leo and Virgo. Okay, so let's take a look. What have we got going on in this spread? Now, as with any of my readings, take on board what resonates, discard what doesn't. This might be your group, it might not be. Uh, you can click on a, another group or another video. Let's take a look and see what we can see. I might as well start with this. This one's poking up. This is a very good card to have in the reverse position, I do believe. If it's upright, we're dealing with deceit, <laughs> okay? When it's in the reverse position, it's saying you can't be deceived. I love this spread actually. I was thinking about this when I went for my walk earlier because I drew them in the morning, then ate lunch and then had a little walk and now I'm here. So um, I did get to see them briefly and I was thinking about these two together. Why have they come reversed and what's this about? And this is fascinating because it's showing me that you have matured. Okay, so this is very good, even though they're all reversed and that might seem like that's not good. Th these are great because this is showing the emperor is the highest ranked male. He's at the top. So that's him. 
there, right? Now, when he's like this, it, it can symbolize or signify that you have got to the top of something. Maybe you've got to the top of your profession or something along those lines. You have manifested this card, but in the reverse position, which to me is indicating you can't go any higher. Okay, so you, this is fascinating, this group, because it feels to me like you've gone up to the top of something or you've matured a great deal or you've risen really high or you've gone to the top. And because you've done that, now your options, this is very much a card of creative options. It can be daydreaming, it can be all that kind of thing, but it's very much options. And when you get to the top of something, your options are few, few possibly to zero. You know when you're in a corporate career and you're at that junior level and there's heaps of jobs because you're cheap, right? And you know, everyone wants to employ you and then you can move about quite easily. Then as you rise up that corporate ladder, that career ladder, the jobs are fewer and sure, they pay a lot more, but they are fewer. You don't get as many opportunities. And that's really the sense that I'm getting with this group. I'm getting the sense, we've also got Leo here and we've got Virgo here. And these are two pretty powerhouse signs that are leadership. You, you often see a lot of leaders coming out of both of these signs. So we have this situation where I feel like you've, and this could be something to do with the fact that you've matured, you've grown, it doesn't have to be corporate. It doesn't have to be any of that, but you've matured, you've grown, you've come to the top. You can't be deceived anymore. Okay, so no one can pull the wool over your eyes. No one can deceive you. No one can, you'll just see through it, right? Someone has a go, someone has a crack at that and you'll just be like, oh, you're doing that, are you? Like, you'll see it. There's no way you, you won't see it. What do we have here? So we've got separation and conflict. So it is saying, what's it saying? Turn your problems into opportunities, treat hostility with kindness. That was a little bit like group one, interestingly. They had a similar sort of a thing going on. I mean, if you've got, we'll, we'll get clarification when we look up the song quote. So I'm not 100% sure exactly what that's referring to. But what I know is that I think because you've done the work, because you've matured, because you've risen to the top and your options are now very few, you've manifested a new beginning and it's time for you. So there's a full moon, there's something you've culminated. You've come to a culmination somewhere in your life on something. It's now time for you to walk through, okay? And walk through to that new beginning. And in that new beginning, you might be a baby in that new realm, okay? Like it doesn't matter how old you are, but you, you know, and that's good. You want that because if you stay here, if you, keep hanging out here, being at the top of this profession that you've risen to or whatever it is that you've done, but you, you can start to get a bit stale. It's important in life that we find the next challenge, we find the new arena, that we walk through to the new playing field, the new training ground. That's really important that we do that. When you do that, it's gonna feel fantastic. You're gonna be able to breathe and you're going to breathe deeper than ever before you're going to breathe cleaner oxygen than ever before you're going to breathe in a new way you're going to feel like you're growing right you, like some new shoots are wanting to come up or come out and it's it's really fantastic so that is what you've you've manifested and it, the idea is very much because we do still have free will don't stick around up here and some people do that and I see that and they're, they're at the top of their career and they're, you know, <clears throat> okay, they're operating at a very amazing level. Let's see what song lyrics you get. Um, you know, so there's something that I've seen people stay here and they get crusty and they get resentful and it's just not good. Okay, so <laughs> let's take a look at what song lyrics come through for you. I had so much fun listening to songs and writing all these out. I've kind of forgotten what I've written, but let's see. Oh, oh David Bowie, this will be uh, golden years. Let's read the lines. It says, don't let me hear you say life's taken you nowhere. 
Look at that sky, life's begun. Nights are warm and the days are young. Yes, this is, sorry, this is just so amazing. <laughs> Group two, you've, that, fantastic. I mean, that couldn't be more, there are so many songs in here. There's even a bird chirping outside, I don't know if you can hear that. This is amazing. This is so perfect because look at that. You've got the new beginning card and it's saying, don't let me hear you say life's taking you nowhere. Because look, you get, you're get you at the top, but you're so, you could be starting to get crusty up here. I'm telling you, you've got to, you got to move and you've got to, you've got to go to where the nights are warm and the days are young. This is so amazing. Look at that sky, life's begun. Do you know the song? It's, um, it's Golden Years by David Bowie. This is such a good song. I absolutely love this song. So <clears throat> this is perfect. It's absolutely perfect for this reading. Uh, it's a great song. If, you've, if you haven't heard it, you can check it out. But um, I remember actually, I've got a bit of a connection with this song. I'll tell you very quickly what happened was, this was a long time ago. I actually, yeah, I, no, I'm not going to tell you the story. <laughs> it's too long. It, it, we're at the nine minute mark. But I mean, th this is just so perfect. Don't let me hear you say life's taking you nowhere. And then I think he sings angel. I just didn't write that there. Uh, and then I, I, I wrote these bits. Look at the sky, life's begun, nights are warm and the days are young. Yeah, look at that breathe. Look at that. I mean, doesn't that look like, what, you know, what, what do we do when, when life has begun? There's a beautiful sky here. Look at that sky, life's begun. What do we do when, when life begins? We breathe. That is the first thing we do on the planet and actually as an astrologer that is we, when we're calculating the time of your birth we're time calculating we're looking at the time of when you take your first breath that's it that that is life you take your first breath and you take your last breath and the, the, the last one okay that's the end but the first one you know very very special so when you go to this new beginning which you have manifested, I'm telling you, you're going to breathe in a whole new way. And look at that. Don't let me hear you say life's taking you nowhere. Right? What a powerful line. Because you are going somewhere. You are going places. You really are. Group two, this was sensational. I absolutely love this reading for you. I hope this has been a good one for you too. Let me know in the comments below how you got on with this reading. I always love to hear how these readings impact you and, and you know, at what time or, or what, what's happening with you and, and how these messages come in. I love reading all that. So um, please let me know in the comments below how you get on. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group three. If you chose group number three, then you are in the right place. Let's take a look at your cards. Let's see what you have pulled through. Oh, what a beautiful start. Blessed. 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 I think blessed is like a, is that like a, an ancient pronunciation? An old, old English pronunciation? I should look that up actually. And then for tarot, I'm always Googling like how to pronounce things and how to do this and how to do that. <laughs> oh, by the way, have I said this before? It, like, um, one of the reasons I like to go slow and show you the cards is so that you can see what your intuition says to you. So check in with your intuition and see what is coming through for you. And the other thing is that not all messages will apply. So take on board what resonates and discard what doesn't. And if it's not your group, you can do another group or you can watch another video or whatever. Okay, so we've got the Ace of Cups in reverse. Beautiful. Page of Cups, no, Page of Wands, sorry. Page of Wands in reverse. Got one more tarot. All right, yeah, we've got the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. You got all reverse souls as well. Same as group two this time, I think. Okay, what's going on with that? We're gonna take a look. I'm not so concerned that that one's, um, I remember you now, I remember. Oh yeah, extremes, look at this. It says, hang on, it says hot moon extremes. 
wow. And you know, I remember when I first saw this card, I was a bit like, oh, do, do I need to like rate this reading M for mature audiences or something? But there's a book there. And he's looking a bit stressed, really. I think that's pain. I don't think this is good times. So, <laughs> well, anyway, let's keep going. <laughs> We're going to find out. Uh, and there's one more card, which is this one. That's the symbol for Sagittarius. And this says, Nahayim, hunt and purpose. It says here, if reaching a goal is your command, your desires, you must learn to master. Okay, yes, desire, of course. Of course there's desire. There's plenty of desire energy on the table because firstly, well, we've got this hot moon going on here, whatever that is. And then we've got the page of wands. We've got fire energy here for sure. And this says hunt and purpose. And this is Sag the symbol for Sagittarius. Now Sagittarius is a fire sign as well. I remember when I looked at this earlier, I looked at this earlier today, I drew them and then I kind of, it's diffused thinking. The reason I like to draw them first and then like, and then I just go and do something different. And that's called diffused thinking because stuff kind of starts happening in the background of your mind. So that's why I like to draw them in advance. There's a, there's a scientific reason as for why. Um, one of the things I thought earlier was that I think you like to go on journeys, long journeys with your mind. And it, it could be if, and the, one of the things I got here was that like, if you're extreme about this, if you're extreme about only using your mind, the book is there, see? So if you're extreme about only using the mind, the moon, to figure everything out, you're gonna, you're gonna burn out. Like it, it's, it's not gonna be good. That's why this Ace of Cups, this is heart energy. This is in reverse. And this is kind of, what this is showing me, this spread, is that when this is upright, look, there's a heart there. She's also got this beautiful singing bowl or whatever, and it's filled with water, and she's got that close to her heart on her body. So this lady knows she's in touch with her heart. She's in touch with her emotions. She's the Ace of Cups. I would imagine that she's perfectly comfortable and at ease when the cup is full. I'd imagine she's perfectly at ease when it's empty. She can give and receive and let love come in, let love go out. She, she's happy, she's, she's got that figured out. She knows how to do that. What I'm getting from this spread is that if you use your mind to to try and figure out matters of the heart, you're gonna burn up and burn out. It's not gonna be good. You're gonna overheat. It's like you're gonna break the machine, <laughs> right? And there are people who do this. They think, and you see, David Hawkins writes about this. Dr. David Hawkins explains that a feeling is the equivalent of something like thousands of thoughts. So use the heart. The heart is a beautiful, elegant uh, instrument. There are also neurological cells in your heart. There's a brain there. There's also a brain in your gut as well. There are neurological cells there too. But there's very much a, heart, a brain here in the heart. Feel, use your feelings. Use this gorgeous, wonderful instrument of yours. Very, very important. We're going to leave that in the upright position because that is that is a remedy. That is something you need to do because this spread is very much showing me and I'm very much getting that as well from this card because Sagittarius is the place where we take these really long journeys with the mind. Okay, So in the Gemini section, so we've got Sagittarius here and we've got Gemini up here. Now Sagittarius is deep down here thinking, 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 going on these long academic intellectual journeys using thousands of thoughts, right? Gemini up here, you get some great comedians come out of here. You get lightheartedness. See, there's heart, there's more heart up in Gemini. And it's like the Gemini people, they know how to, look at that, she's above it all. And to me, this is kind of, this is kind of Gemini. This could also be Cancer because we've got uh, two and two, we've got a four there, but we're kind of up in that realm. And she's above it all. 
she is absolutely above it all and she's in bliss and there's good humor and love and all the light wonderful emotions are accessible to her so this is really important see if reaching a goal is your command your desires your mind hang on what does that say your desires if reaching a goal is your command your desires you must learn to master there we go so yes i mean desire energy but it's well, i'm getting a strong feeling that you're kind of, you're trying to compute all of this with your mind and you're going to burn up and burn out if you only use your mind you've got to engage your heart and become and go up into that gemini cancer type space go up there where it's light and it's airy and it's beautiful and there's humor and there's love and there's lightheartedness and with you know how a, that's what i was thinking about like a poet can just do a couple of lines and that sums up an entire book right as academics here with sagittarius they'll write a book they'll write a phd a comedian will sum up the phd in two lines okay or a poet or a singer okay so let's see what song comes through now am i concerned about this am i concerned about this i'll go through that very quickly i'm not concerned about that you have manifested what it is that you want so this is the ten of pentacles this is wealth this is money this is the dream life this is the big house the big car the two kids the whole scene the whole scene whatever it is that you want you have manifested it it's in its reverse position it's on pause okay so it just feels like and you are wanting to be creative but it's just this is this is on pause and it's because you're not engaging your heart it's as simple as that i really just think it's that and knowing the place of thought energy knowing the place of heart energy knowing how all of that works hunt and purpose see i think you are going after something and you are you are going after this beautiful dream life so i can definitely see that hunt and purpose and your goals you are on it it's good i don't think you're far away but i just think that there's just just a little bit of a holding pattern because i think you might be overusing the mind that's all uh, let's take a look at what song lyric comes through i love doing this song lyric thing oh my gosh group two was a good one what was group one's one? Oh yeah that was quite good too that totally matched but group two really matched i was just like wow okay let's see what you get because we've got the need to go to somewhere a bit poetic and light and beautiful and let's see what comes through i hope something really good comes through here so oh how interesting <laughs> Oh, I like this. This is great. I don't give a damn what the people say. I'm going to do it my way, going to do it my way. Do your thing, Basement Jacks. See, look at that. Of all the song lyrics, you got something that's really simple, like as well. It's not complicated. And this is really, this is definitely asking you. It's, it's asking you to be lighthearted, to be simple, to be of the heart. You know, one feeling equals 10,000 thoughts. Look at that. One feeling equals 10,000 thoughts. And look at him. He's, he's like he's sweating, he's in pain, and I bet that back hurts. This is not a good thing. And the, the other thing is, you've got the word extreme here. You are being asked to be less extreme about something. There's something in your world right now that you're being extreme about. And the solution is, you know, really just to just to come back to the heart and to be and to simplify there's a big message of simplification and very much this thing about i don't give a damn what the people say i'm going to do it my way going to do it my way that is definitely referencing this fire energy which you have to be you okay when it comes to fire and that's quite possibly really referencing this that's bringing this into the upright position look at her she doesn't give a damn she doesn't is it she yes it is she <laughs> uh, it says i don't give a damn what the people say i'm going to do it my way i'm going to do it my way look at her she is dancing her way she's doing it her way she doesn't care what what people say or what people think and we, we are running this sagittarius gemini line because a part of that a part of fire actually uh, in astrology and all that kind of thing is about you know um, having an opinion and not caring what other people say right you've got to be that fiery personality who's going to be you 
because that is actually what the world wants from you. The world wants you to be you. That's why you incarnated. You do the world a disservice by not being yourself or you know, not, not expressing your uniqueness. That's so important that we do that. You know, um, it's, it's really, really important. And that's why you need some heart energy. You need some heart energy here because you got to feel it. You got to feel what it is that you want to express. And you can't think it to death. You can't, this is a bit of overthinking going on here. And I think some of that might be tied in with because you want to make money or you want, and that therefore you have to think about what other people think and all that kind of thing. I know, but no, <laughs> this reading is definitely saying, please be your unique and wild and fascinating self. We need that. The world needs that. So guys, this has been a great reading for you. I absolutely love the song. I love that you got like a simple, because there are some deep lyrics in here as well but this is quite this is a bit light-hearted and this is just a bit fun and the song is really cool too so maybe you might want to want to listen to the song do your thing basement jacks but thank you so much for coming to this reading if you would like you're very welcome to leave a comment below i love to read what you have to say i might not always get back to you straight away but i absolutely love uh, reading the comments because it helps keep me going and it also helps um, you know me deliver what kind of thing you guys like so thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time